with the announcement of surging sparks obviously pikachu is a huge player in this set and it just started to get me thinking about what are some of the best pikachu cards to collect and invest in so i just made a little bit of a list here um, we'll just dive straight into this i'll give you guys my opinions uh, obviously here's the pack art from surging sparks looks great super excited um, but if you are a pikachu fan you might want to start off with one of these cards now, the list kind of grows from uh, more affordable to more expensive, and I'll touch on both collectability and investability, and you'll find that um, a lot of these cards are modern on this list. Um, if you're seeing something that I'm missing, uh, let me know in the comments. But first up, uh, we have the Pikachu from Crown Zenith. Um, not a very expensive card, obviously. You can see near mint prices um, under 4 bucks on TCG Player, and but, I mean, just from a collectability standpoint... This artwork is its super adorable. Great Pikachu card. Uh, wanted to start off with a few more affordable cards. It's not like this this is a secret or anything, but just a, just a great card, right, to start it off with. Um, then we'll jump into Lost Origin. And once again, very affordable card in the $4 range. So these, these first ones that we're touching on are more just for if you're a Pikachu collector or just a Pokemon card collector. These are probably cards that you would want to have in your collection. Um, because these are cards that I have in my collection, right? And uh, I love this sleepy Pikachu with the trainer. I it's Sometimes it's unfortunate. A lot of the good cards, artwork-wise, are uh, so affordable. Like, I want this to be a valuable card, but still. Uh, it's super affordable, which is great. Anybody can get into this card at 4 bucks. Just absolutely love this artwork. This is one of my favorites. I don't know why. Um... I just absolutely love it. I have this card in a PSA 10 personally, just because, yeah, it's too good not to. So, yeah, four bucks. It's a great pickup. Any any Pikachu fan should have this card. Um, next up, we're gonna move back into Crown Zenith again. We just touched on this recently in a video. This card, but uh, artwork wise, absolutely beautiful. All the all these Pokemon in the background. Yeah. So, this card once again is more of a you know get this for your collection it's not as much of an investment just because of how common it is you know it's eight dollars and fifty cents um it was sub eight dollars not that long ago it's kind of a little bit on a, an uptick but if you're interested in this card there is a little bit more of an investable side of this card if we jump over to the japanese side which uh because this was a japanese promo and it's worth a lot more you can see uh, it is on a bit of a decline right here. It's been, it was, I mean, 400 and slowly coming down to 127. We haven't really seen its bottom yet. It's kind of still on its way down. But if you're looking for, to invest uh, in this particular card, you know, you, you could be picking this up in a PSA 10, the English version. It's not very expensive either, but I do think that the Japanese side will have a little bit, uh, there's just more value there because it's a bit more rare i believe it came in some sort of collection box i'm not super sure let me know in the comments if you guys know um i can't remember off the top of my head um you know what what this came from but um so yeah just an interesting option for you there a bit more expensive but if you wanted to dabble with that there's a lot of japanese pikachu cards coming up at the end which are super awesome um but next up we have the pikachu from 151 which is uh, starting to get a bit more expensive. You can see it's on a bit of an uptick right now. You're in the $20, $23 range. And on the one month chart, you can see it's up 23%. Now 151 is kind of a unique beast in and of itself where it's just so popular that, and with how heavy it's probably gonna be printed, you know, um, over time. For this card, I'm not, super saying it's probably like a great investment like it's going to appreciate massively long term and the artwork of the actual pikachu i would say isn't the greatest but what i do absolutely love about this card is the pokemon in the background um you know growlith inside duck over here like the more you look butterfree like there's pokemon everywhere nidoran's over here is this this is gengar right yeah gengar um jigglypuff like there's so many pokemon slowpoke over here like the more you look what is that? Is that Mr. Mime? Can't tell. Um, but the more you look, the more Pokemon you see. So that's, I love cards that have lots of Pokemon in the background. So that's why this card is on the list and 151 is a popular set. It's brought so many people in. I don't think you can go wrong with the uh, 
151 Pikachu. Just my opinion there. But yeah, so more of a collectability side on that. And okay, next up we have, this is another one from Lost Origin. I just recently picked this up um, as well. And just this card, just these trainer cards with red, absolutely love them. Uh, I'm just a sucker for them. I don't know why. But the pose of the Pikachu with red in the background, um, I just love this card. It's, um, I do think that this card is a little bit more split between um, collectability and investability where it's affordable enough to you for you to collect but if you're looking to invest uh, I do think that this has potential because I do believe in Lost Origin because this is from the Lost Origin trainer gallery I do believe that that set will do very well long term give it a few more years once those box prices start to really appreciate I think that it has a chance to surpass Fusion Strike and be possibly the second most expensive sword and shield era box that is just my opinion i don't know if that's going to happen for sure but i just have a feeling that the giratina in that set is going to pull that set up um over time i could be wrong but that's that's my opinion so um it has pikachu in it so you know lost origin uh there's a few pikachus in it so i do think that that helps it um as well next up another uh lost origin Trainer Gallery, Pikachu VMAX. Now this card's a little bit more expensive. If I'm being completely honest, I like this card better. Uh, but this is a VMAX, so, and it's a little bit more expensive, but kind of the same logic. Love the trainer, like the big old Chonky, the Chonkachu up there. It's, it's cool, nothing wrong with it. I just, personally, I gravitate towards this one more. But this one's a little bit more of an expensive card. It's on a little bit of a downturn here, so we don't know. It doesn't look like it's completely bottomed out. It's, it looks like it's a, on a little bit of a down run. Uh, it can be hard to tell sometimes with these, so you might want to wait a little bit longer to see if this bottoms out more if you're looking to pick up this card currently. But I would say that this card kind of falls into the same, uh, same aspect of collectability and investability. I think there's... Uh, there's reasons to, to pick it up for both. I do think that, once again, I think Lost Origin it's going to raise the price of some of these cards once those boxes start to uh, take off slowly over time. I do, I, you know, I could see, I don't usually want to put some uh, price guesses on these, but I could see this being a $50 card in the future. It's at 33. Uh, not, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but um, I could see that being a possibility in the future. It's a cool card. Next up we have, ooh, we're going back in time a little bit. So uh, Cosmic Eclipse. Uh, Pikachu, same thing. I'm a sucker for these cards with the trainers. This one's uh, a little more cutesy, and but I just like it a lot. I can't help it. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's a common theme uh, with Red and Pikachu. I'm a sucker for it. So uh, pr fairly affordable still, seeing, and it looks like it's kind of bottoming out a little bit at that $38 range. So uh, this one... I would say is starting to get a little bit more into the investability because it's from such it's starting to age more. I think there's more room here uh, for invest the investability side. Some of these older cards um, might have a little bit more room there. Still affordable at 38 bucks. Um, so yeah, kind of a little bit split there. But I lead more I lead more investment than collect um, collecting. But uh, you know when I say that it's not that. It's not that I don't think expensive cards are worth collecting, but I just think that there's more uh, room for them to move as an investment. Obviously, it's a great card for your collection as well. So, um, it, you know, it's just understand that as I say that. I'm just trying to give my uh, take on both. Uh, they're all collectible at the end of the day. So um, then we have the Vivid Voltage Rainbow Chonkachu. Now, this card is kind of, you know, Vivid Voltage... It's not really the best set. This was before the alt arts came out. Like the next set, Battle Styles, is when the alt arts started to come out. So Vivid Voltage kind of got screwed a little bit. But I do think that this Rainbow Chonkachu is a super cool card. And it's kind of split. I, I don't know how well this is going to do long term, like price raising. If we look at the. We pull this one year chart up. Obviously, it had its run up like all the other um, 
bigger cards here and it's still kind of on its way down but it looks like it's kind of leveling out it looks like one yeah leveling out around 116 um this one if i'm being completely honest it's up here because it's more expensive but i would be a little more hesitant around this card i just think that possibly this card might not the set in this card might not age the best so i don't know if that's controversial or not but I'm not the biggest fan of Vivid Voltage, but I did want to include it because um, it is a cool card. It's just, yeah, I, I, at the price point, you know, I compare it a lot to, um, where was that other one? Uh, this guy. I don't know why, but I just compare it a lot to this. So, um, yeah, you see that? I'd rather have this card and it's a lot more affordable. I'd rather get multiple copies of this, in, like, or in a PSA 10. Um, but that's just my opinion, personally. So we'll move on from this card. <laughs> uh, next up, this is a super cool card. Um, once again, we're going back in time a little bit. XY promo here. You got the Pikachu with the Electabuzz and the Jolteon. Uh, this card, I think, uh, because of it's a little more rare, a little more old. Uh, this one, I lean more investability side. If you can get a clean copy of this card, there's not many sales on TCG Player. So it's more rare, you know, XY era, um, but stunning Stunning card. I like Pikachu's look. Super cool card. So I would say this could be more investability. You get a clean copy, especially like a PSA 10. Um, I haven't checked PSA 10 pricing on this card, but um, I would expect it to to be doing good if it's 100 raw. Uh, so yeah, in the last month, there's only been a few sales here. 22 sales in the past month, uh, 34 in the past three months. 81 in the past year so and you can see kind of has that same uptick come down and it's on a little bit of uptick and leveling off so yeah xy promo pikachu super cool card now we're going to start getting into a little bit of the bigger cards and there's some vintage and there's some modern in here and first up we're gonna obviously because you know i'm a little bit older i like the base set we're going to touch on the first edition shadowless now there's a lot of these cards out there, you know, they printed base set a lot. It was very popular. This one, I am saying more honestly, if I'm being completely honest, and this, because there's just not a ton of room on vintage, in my opinion, to go up. Not saying that there won't be another boom or something, but this for me is more collectible. If you're a diehard collector or specifically a Pikachu fan, you're going to want to get the first, the rarest version of the first card. First edition Shadowless, and honestly, you know, depending on the, they're not that expensive, really, like a hundred bucks, sixty bucks. This is going to depend on the condition of the card. Obviously, like lightly played, heavily played are going to be a lot cheaper, but it's just a cool card to have. It's kind of like Pikachu's rookie card, in my opinion. So uh, that's why it's on the list. It's honestly more collectible than investable, in my opinion. So. Um, I, that's what I, where I have it at this card though, on the other hand, now this card is a bit more rare. And if you're familiar with this, this is the reverse hollow from the legendary collection. And this is actually from jungle, right? This is the jungle artwork. Uh, but this reverse fireworks pattern. Now this card I say is a bit more investable just because of the rarity of the legendary collection and i love the firework pattern so this one like i said they're all collectible right but this one i would say has the potential to be more investable you can see they go for 150 to 300 bucks depending on the quality this is a near mint sale at 340 uh, psa 10 prices we can pull that up while we're here on price charting psa 10 prices are crazy uh we're looking in the three grand range like high threes and some sales back here in the fours so that's kind of wild, uh, but it just proves you know how sought after these cards are. So this one I say is a little bit more investable, a little bit more niche possibly, but uh, I just wanted to give some some love to the legendary collection reverse hollows because I really love those. So I wanted to touch on that, uh, this Pikachu real quick. So um, yeah, that's that. And then, okay, so here we are at the end. If you're familiar with these, uh, and if you're not, there's tons of these, these are Japanese promos. From the, um, they came in a expensive box. They're the Poncho Pikachu's. Now, there's I only picked the Charizard one. There's different ones. There's Rayquaza. There's there's a lot, right? 
Uh, there's a Gyarados. I actually really like the Gyarados one a lot because I like Gyarados. But if I had to pick one of the ponchos for – it's literally – this one I'm so split on. If you have the money to put this in your collection, they're very expensive. Like right now, 1800 bucks. right? There was a heavily uh, – what this was a mega charizard okay um but yeah you're looking at 1800 bucks for to pick up this card i say it's split between if you can afford this for your collection then great i personally where i'm at i can't i would love to have this in my collection uh it's investability wise i think that these cards are going to do extremely well long term especially in psa 10 high graded copies psa 9s even so this one i say it, i'm split on but it's so expensive uh, it's just kind of out of the range of the normal collectors and even for people to invest in it's a lot of money to put into one single card but all of the poncho pikachus i think are great for both absolutely stunning super cool cards uh very expensive and yeah if i had to pick one this would probably be the one that i would pick up i do hope to someday pick up at least one of these for my collection but currently, I just can't justify it at the moment. But, yeah, these are super cool. I wish we would have gotten these in English. Uh, but, you know, they're still awesome. Because you're getting them for the art anyway. So, yeah. Poncho Pikachus. Can't go wrong there. Super expensive. Super awesome cards. All right. Last card on the list here is kind of similar to the Poncho Pikachu. And it's the Mario Pikachu. I, as a big Mario fan growing up playing Mario same literally same exact thing i'm so split on i would love this for my collection i want to love to be able to have one just to hold on to for long-term investments i'm talking psa 9 psa 10 only in my opinion if i'm picking up this card uh you can see 1300 dollars, 1400 dollars. it looks like it's come down a little bit which uh i don't know if it's leveled out yet i'm not super in-depth on these expensive uh, Japanese promo cards so I would have to take a deeper look at the market to know if this is like maybe a really good time to buy but this would be one that I would want in my collection or to hold long term for an investment because I only see these appreciating I see the most growth from these modern cards now let's take a look at the PSA 10 prices while we have this here looks like there's not a ton of sales obviously but you're looking at 5500 bucks 54 5500 for the Mario Pikachu in a PSA 10. Uh, if we come back to the the Charizard one, um, that's actually on the uptick in a PSA 10, but yeah, 30, 3300 to 5500 here. So very expensive, very cool Pikachu cards. Um, I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to touch on these. If you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content, so do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button while you're there, and then Leave a comment. Let me know uh, what I was missing on my list. I'm sure th there's so many Pikachu cards. Obviously, I was going to be missing something there. So let me know uh, what cards you think if what card got too much attention or what cards didn't get mentioned. Uh, but that's I'm gonna do it. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Uh, I just wanted to touch on Pikachu because Surging Sparks has me thinking about Pikachu. So I just thought it'd be a fun little video to follow up the Surging Sparks announcement with some cards that these are. I guess at the end of the day. These are cards that I want in my collection. I want in my collection, and I want to have uh, for investment purposes. So, yeah, that's it. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.